But, um, hi from my quarantine. I thought I'd take a break from filming bad TikToks to film a video. Today, we are going to talk about why Edward Hopper is a total quarantine vibe. Not him as a person, of course. I mean, that would suck. Like, oh my God, you're a quarantine vibe. Like, what does that even mean? Also, hi, I'm Jess. I've seen a few posts on social media and how Edward Hopper's artwork has kind of resurfaced over the past few weeks because of quarantine culture and everything going on. And so let's talk about it. So you probably know him by his most famous work, Nighthawks. This is at the Art Institute of Chicago. You might not have seen it in person, but it's appeared throughout many different places in pop culture. Here it is in The Simpsons, Fresh Off the Boat, season two. So who is Edward Hopper? Edward Hopper is an American realist painter, but like not really a realist entirely. When you think of realism and art, that's usually a term used to describe something that is pretty realistic, you know? It depicts things from nature, things from our life without adding any crazy like elements of fantasy in it, you know? It's kind of how we see the world around us. If you look at an Edward Hopper painting, it does look pretty realistic. There's something a little different about it. it kind of pairs it down each composition to just essential elements of it. Primarily uses a lot of geometric shape. He's known for painting scenes of typical American life. Urban scenes, rural scenes. Back to the main point of the video. Why does his art resonate with us right now during this pandemic and it has to do a lot with the themes in his artwork you can't think about Edward Hopper without thinking about themes of loneliness and isolation if we jump back to Nighthawks Hopper was apparently inspired by a diner in Greenwich Village New York and the only light in this work is coming from the fluorescent of the diner itself. So around when this was painted, like in the 1940s, um, that's when fluorescent lighting started to become a thing. And so you have this fluorescent lighting, it's giving this kind of like unsettling glow. We want to be pulled and we want to go to where it's lit where it's lit um, and because nothing else around is lit so of course we want to go there but yeah we're not let in there's no entrance we're just kind of stuck outside being a silent observer there is no other hint of human life out there except for these people in the diner none of them are interacting you know even the couple or the man and woman sitting next to each other, we aren't entirely sure if they even know each other or if they're friends, or are they dating? Like, is this some sort of like drug deal situation? I mean, I'm just gonna say it. And so despite them being together, um, it, they all feel kind of lonely and isolated. And then you look at the composition itself, you know, you have like this clear diner corner. You don't see any type of door entrance to get in. It's were literally closed off. Edward Hopper is pretty interesting with his use of windows and glass. He makes the glass very transparent and almost not there. Like he's inviting us to look in, yet we're still not really fully allowed in. Another big theme in his art is silence. Speaking of, like I hear the rain right now and it's actually like kind of nice, said the Southern Californian. This is at the Whitney and I actually found this in my camera roll and forgot I took a picture of it, but I was looking for a new post for my Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Like this is kind of how life is looking right now. So this painting was painted in 1930 and it feels like this could be in 2020. I've been watching a lot of drone footage, I'm watching one on LA and it's been so so surreal and so crazy to see the 405 empty like it truly is like the apocalypse then all these familiar sites and places completely empty and dead that reminded me a lot of this painting contemplation is another key theme in his art a lot of these figures are spending time alone. It just gives you the overwhelming feeling of either they're deep in thought, they are maybe standing in an apartment, but their mind is completely somewhere else. I realize, at least for myself, that because I've been spending so much downtime, alone time, not being out and about, it's created a lot of space for my own thoughts and to be a little bit more reflective on things. I think that's also another reason that Hopper's paintings are really resonating with people right now. So all these themes, loneliness, isolation, contemplation, tension, it's all kind of sounding like 
the quarantine life to me, right? Kind of. Hopper grew up in New York. Um, he started painting at the age of 10. He struggled to find his artistic identity. And this is something that I just personally relate to right now because I feel like I'm still struggling to find my YouTube style, my personal style, my like identity. I mean, it's hard. I feel like by my 20s, I thought that I was just gonna have like a very good grip of like who I am. And I'm realizing that's not the case, but I've gotten to a better point where I realize that's okay. And as long as I'm continuing to grow and pushing myself out of my comfort zone, like doing this, that eventually it will all just come together. At least that's what I'm telling myself, but you know. I feel you, Hopper. Until he became, you know, this like super well-known artist, um, he was a freelancer, he did a lot of illustration, which he wasn't that much like of a fan of, but he did it, you know, how to pay the bills. Um, and he also ended up doing a lot of movie posters as, you know, one of his gigs. So this is really important to know because you really get that cinematic film type of quality in his art. Like you look at it and I feel like this could be a still from a movie scene. When you look at his artwork, you're really creating a narrative or storyline for what's going on. He would paint a scene and it would be as if it was right before a turning point or like climactic moment in a movie or it'd be right after. It's kind of up to us, the viewer, to decide what's about to happen or what's what just happened. He leaves out just enough so that we have to use our imagination. So if you look at this painting called Chop Suey, um, it was painted in 1929 and you have these two women at lunch and like, do I want to be at this lunch? Absolutely not. It looks horrible. It looks awkward. It looks like the other friend is yelling at her about something that she thinks she did wrong or she's like being judgy or they're just not really connecting. Like, are they even friends, enemies? It honestly looks awkward as hell. I feel bad for both of them. This is what Hopper does so well. He was a master at creating these little snapshots of drama. So Hopper was inspired by movies while filmmakers were inspired by him. Famous filmmaker Alfred Hitchcock based the house in Psycho off of one of Edward Hopper's paintings. And so you have the Bates Mansion or Bates Hotel. Um, clearly I didn't see this movie because I am a wimp. Like I don't do scary movies. This is called House by the Railroad yet again with the isolation vibes even though we don't have any people in there to give it any type of you know human narrative you have this victorian house it's all alone and there's railroads cutting in front of it and so we're literally separated from it and at the time this was painted victorian houses were out of style it's kind of like this theme of this old way being passed up for new technology urbanization the railroad and it's just kind of being left behind also, this house may have inspired Tim Burton for Beetlejuice, that movie I have seen and it is great, highly recommend. Let's talk about some key takeaways though and why I think that there's a positive spin on all of this. I think that there is some power in taking the time to just be with yourself and be like, comfortable with that and just reflect. Like who knows, maybe during this time you are going to develop a new habit or you're going to come up with like the next great idea and that's going to launch you into like this whole new adventure. Wow, I have gotten cheesy in this quarantine. He often has his characters basking in light, looking toward the light. I see this also as a way of, you know, showing hope and maybe they are looking off into, you know, a brighter future. Despite the fact that his scenes are really lonely or desolate you know light still finds its way through sometimes it's sunlight and sometimes it is the glow of fluorescent lighting but it is still there i feel like i just had a moment how do i get this to work again <laughs> i give up but anyway that's why i feel like hopper is relatable right now but let's not just like only think about it as a sad lonely we're all alone type of boy you know like we are quarantined we are isolated but like we're doing it all together just like in the paintings i hope that in our lives we can also find the positives even if they're small little things thank you so much for watching and i will talk to you soon